first things first, what did Agostino do on his weekend? I'll tell you, dear listeners. I went to a possession party at E1, one of my um, more um, beloved clubs in London over the last couple of years. I felt like the programming has, at E1 has got considerably better, I feel like, over the last couple of years. I'm not sure if they've employed someone new there or they've changed directions, but whoever's doing the programming over there, you're doing a great job. So big up to you. Nice one. Um, I'm a big fan of Possession also, mostly as a promotion outfit because I did a bit of promoting myself back in the day and my promoting wasn't even to this level. Mine was just plugging and playing at bars. You go to a bar, you ask them if you can do your night there. They tell you, yeah, you get a 10% split of the bar if it exceeds over £1,000 or whatever in revenue or whatever through the till. Um, you book your DJs to come and play. You pay them if you want. You don't pay them if you don't want. But regardless, you put on a good night, you wake up a flyer, Bob's your uncle, granny's your aunt. Easy. But nowadays it feels like a lot of these kids coming up are proper throwing like some actual raves. They're like, you know, renting out venues, warehouses, you know, buying their own audio equipment, hiring audio, visual lighting people to come and do stuff like crazy. The levels are getting upped. But in general, I always keep an eye out for that kind of thing because on any level, whether you're organizing an exhibition, you're trying to get your friends out for a birthday party, putting on an event is difficult and getting people to come is even harder, especially if you have to make them pay. Like, people don't like to leave their house, especially in the post-pandemic era. It feels like, you know, the the clubbing... I'm going to talk about it later as well. The whole clubbing and relationship with DJs and artists and how you need to come up in the scene, it's kind of changed. It's a bit weird. It's not It's not the same. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. So, I'm a big fan of Possession. I like them. I even follow one of the girls who's kind of a, behind the whole Possession brand and it's now kind of evolved into a booking agency too. I uh, think they probably do other stuff that I'm probably not um, involved with or I'm not aware of, but in general, you know, I like what they do. So I've always wanted to go to a party that they put on, but I wanted to my first experience to be the ones that they put on in the outskirts of Paris because that's where basically they got famous from, where they, you know, they'd have these boiler rooms and people record these videos of these crazy kids going mad to this new form or this kind of uh, newer sounding uh, techno music that was getting played in these clubs, which is not really new, but you know what I mean, fast tempo stuff. And it just looked amazing, especially when you're in the lockdown. You see all these kids um, raving, cool, having a good time, tops off, dancing, sweating their face off, and you're like, bam, damn, 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 FOMO, 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 I wish that was me. I wish I was catted up to my eyeballs, willing and able to raise my heartbeat to ungodly levels. But that obviously wasn't most of us. So... I was holding out to go to a Paris party, but obviously, you know, France was going through their thing with luck with COVID. That wasn't necessarily the book. So I thought, you know what? The best thing to do would be to book whatever, go to any sort of event they put on here in the UK and then just kind of do it that way. And then I think two events happened to come by at the same time. The tickets were made available for their festival that they have in August happening in the outskirts of Paris. I'm officially, supposedly should be going to. I just got my holiday booked from work, approved for that sort of weekend to go. And then I also booked, obviously, the tickets to go to E1 the other weekend. And um, yeah, man, I'm not too sure if I'm going to go to the festival now. <laughs> I'm not too sure. As much as I like them as a, as a promotional outfit and I think what they do as a business is crazy good. If I'm not mistaken, again, maybe I'm wrong. I didn't really check too tough, but I saw a couple of clips here and there from the lady who I follow online who's behind possession. Maybe she's one half of it. I'm not too sure. But I don't even think she was even there. I think she was. She might have been back home. I don't know, but she didn't look like she was in London. So Possession is at a level now where they're operating, you know, it's such a professional outfit. They're able to just kind of throw on parties and not be in the, not be at the venue themselves and have it kind of go down, which is kind of, you know, in, especially in a dance music setting, especially if you've got a party or lev a party to a level of that kind of notoriety, it's a bit unheard of of the people that are behind it not to kind of enjoy the clout and kind of stand behind a booth as well and enjoy the kind of hype and get all the adulation. So the fact that they're able just to kind of run it as a business, like kind of how a boiler room runs, right? I don't think the founders of boiler room are going to all the flipping boiler rooms that are happening all over the world, but that kind of goes to show how professional of an outfit it is, how successful it's become over the years, and maybe it also is representative of maybe the magic has somewhat been lost. 
if they're able to kind of just bang them out to this kind of level because they're doing quite a few. It's not like they're doing, you know, a small amount now. They're just still, they're doing bears. Um, you know, the, the one happening in August, if I'm not mistaken, the festival that I'm, I'm, I hopefully should be going to or that I may be thinking I'm not going to anymore. If I'm not mistaken as well, there's like f at least maybe four other events from possession happening between now and that festival in August. So they're literally churning them out. And I think before the lockdown happened um, in Paris or before like, you know, hospitality industry and nightlife and whatnot and clubs were allowed to, weren't allowed to open, they were putting on events on a fairly regular basis. Of course, they were able to kind of get away maybe with a bit more on the outskirts of Paris because I'm assuming if it's anything, if it's anything similar to like Gomorrah, not Gomorrah, if it's anything similar to like Engrenage, Spiral, I would imagine the outskirts of Paris are like, you know, pretty rough neighborhoods they're probably places where police don't usually kind of bother people too much about you know what they're doing so maybe you can get away with a lot more in those kind of areas because things are a little bit more underhand maybe a bit more under table like wink wink nudge nudge sort of vibe i don't really know who knows but regardless they're churning them out to a kind of high level which <laughs> which is you know twofold negative positive i guess because on one side it allows someone like myself to get a ticket to go on another side it might be a sign that it's not cool anymore because i'm going <laughs> you know what i mean that might be a clear a clear identification of why it's not cool anymore because i'm actually there because i have to be honest man I've, i took a little clip of the, of, of the of the event and i'm i'm a real stickler i'm a real real fuddy dad about making sure that you go to things yourself instead of just like rabbiting what other people say about a, a, a thing a venue or whatever and just experiencing it for yourself and seeing if you like it or not and i went there at a good time i think i arrived there like 1 a.m um you know the security search wasn't too crazy the queue wasn't too crazy outdoors didn't you know anything about e1 is that you know you have to the, the, the flipping um cloakroom is outside so at the door to go into it is you have to come outside the building to go into the cloakroom so you know if you're one of those people like myself who likes to kind of like go in and kind of put you know uh, purvey the stripping surroundings see what's happening and then go cloak room it's a bit annoying to be inside and then go outdoor to go hang your coat that's a bit of an annoying thing but apart from that easy to get in and once i got in once i had a couple of drinks visited the bathroom a couple of times and just was able to kind of you know get my back against the wall and just position up posted with my you know my jacket between my legs and have a bit of a sway and kind of get into the groove i realized quickly this isn't for me i was like closing my eyes trying to get into it and this is what i heard And this is a five minute clip that I recorded, uploaded on YouTube. And I kid you not, it's just the same, the same, the same monotonous beat again and again and again. And again, don't get me wrong. I'm a big techno fan. I know I've been to Bergheim many times. I've been following this music, dance, electronic music for the best part of, you know, two decades. This is my life's kind of uh, passion outside of many other things that i'm into it's definitely formed a big part of my kind of social surroundings and what i kind of get up to in terms of the holidays i go to and the friends i have cool i understand that but let's not be under any illusions the kind of music that they play at possession this kind of hard techno hardcore trancey whatever vibe they're playing at 140 bpm and up it really lacks a lot of like it, I'm, I'm, i think also DV, dvs almost talking about it lacks no, it's not even gro groove is maybe one thing but it lacks even ingenuity it's not even like interesting you know it's just don't get me wrong i understand I, I think i'm thinking i was th thinking about it t t today really trying to put it to my head thinking if i was 16 to 23 and i saw for the first time that iconic video of possession party in boiler room that one that's like a million views or something right where people are like standing on tables and on speakers and shit right and it was like in the middle of the pandemic and i was just pissed off with my government i was annoyed i wasn't gonna be able to go to student halls you know i was angsty i was you know just being a, a young person at that person at that time and i stumbled across that video i would be all up in the parties every single weekend whenever they put them on that would be my type of thing because it'd be a great way to kind of get involved in that kind of scene because you'd see it from the grassroots up. And it also could maybe speak to my level of frustration. That kind of, <clears throat> I mean, it speaks to that kind of angst um, or that wanting to, or that wanting to release 
maybe for the week usually you're kind of under the thumb of your parents under the thumb of your school under the thumb of your college your university your workplace and then you go out and you're like oh man you're sticking to the man by like shaking your head with your little what you what all those all those boys wearing at the party with your little pearls on and your nails painted and your top off and you want to just like you know give it to the man on the dance floor but I don't want to give it to anyone. You know what I mean? I, I just want to have a good time. I want to rave. Maybe, you know, have a little flirt here and there. I don't know. Have a couple of laughs in the smoking area and go home. That's it. I don't want to do anything else. Like, I'm not really in it to, like, you know, um, tap out from a regular everyday life. I think my life is pretty decent. My Monday to Friday isn't that strenuous that it would allow me or that it would require me to go out and it that be the reason why I'm going out is to release and to unplug from all the troubles I have in the no, I don't it's not really that bad for me. It really isn't. Um and I think maybe that's where the disconnect lies. The fact that at the age and stage of my life that I'm at, at the moment, this kind of music doesn't speak to me in that way. But then outside of that, it also just doesn't sound that interesting. It really doesn't. Like, we'll just screw across in this video a little bit more. Maybe it's the wrong type of, you know, I'm the wrong person to kind of use an example because I've only got one clip. It's only a five minute clip, I know, but it doesn't really get more interesting, does it? Someone's taking a top off there. And then it got me thinking as well about this. It got me thinking, like, do we need more gatekeeping in dance music? Like, do we need more um, checks and balances when it comes to what types of nights get like, pushed? Maybe not. You know, you can't have checks and balances in nightlife because at the end of the day, the people vote with their feet. They vote with their ticket purchasing, right? Power. They could have been anywhere they wanted to be, anywhere in London on that given weekend and they all decided to descend at e to e1 which is not again if you're if you're not from the area it's not the easiest place to get to it's not the easiest place to get home from either the cabs and ubers there from there are always expensive even from where i live even to where i live was was i think like 27 pound or whatnot so it's not some sort of thing you decide on a whim you plan this out and like i said before i think you're going to a night like this including your drugs your drinking your cloakroom your maybe you're drinking when you get there pre-drinking when you're at home your uber maybe when you get back you're looking at easily spending a hundred pounds easily to go out there so it's not like a cheap night and even if you want to be a cheap night it's still 50 50 pounds which is still not a cheap night regardless so maybe the fact that people are going there is you know is kind of um get keeping enough it's like they've decided to spend their money at this sort of place but i just don't know i think musically it's just not as interesting as a crowd that's the thing the crowd is interesting like i bumped into at least five people who came from overseas, like Holland, Italy, France, um, Germany, of course, uh, Spain, somewhere else. Like at least five people separately that I bumped into on the dance floor talking and have, you know maybe sharing your cigarette in the in the smoking area here and there, who said they were from abroad and who wanted to come to a possession party because of the videos they've seen online, because of the hype, because of the Instagram, bloody blah blah blah. And I'm done, and I just I was in there. Then I tried to think, okay, look, let me just focus and pick out a DJ that I like. So, you know what? Let me let me listen to Charlie Spark. Because, you know, random, uh, I've seen a few times. So, let's let's see what Charlie Sparks is saying. And I think Charlie Sparks, like everyone there, who I kind of don't know, he's the one person who I feel like I would probably have listened to, even if he wasn't, you know, if he didn't have such hype around his name or if he wasn't associated with the kind of position crew people. I think I would have kind of resonated with Charlie Sparks and what he does. I'm hearing him play. I'm standing by the side of the flipping uh stage um next to the, one of the other bars and everyone's trying to you know beg friends to try and get on the stage to be part of that whole like stage behind dancing thing which i like actually i'm not gonna lie i like because there was a time back in the day when ricardo Villa lobos and the lucianos and the seth Trotters even came after the fact and jamie jones when those guys were on top of the world the culture that existed behind the DJ booth was always like too cool for school, showing off like, oh, we're in a, it's like we're in a VIP area, we're behind the, uh. do you know what I mean? It, it came off as a little bit snobby, right? It came off like they were being cunts. At least with these kids that dance on the stage, they're legitimately dancing. They're legitimately going for it, like sweating their faces off, you know, pupils dilated and just having the time of their life, jaws swinging. They're really partying up there. So it's good to see. So the, 
the clout of trying to get on stage isn't just to kind of look cool and look down upon people like that meme that people share on flipping dance music pages all over the place, right? With the guy on the flipping balcony, like looking down at the peasants as he's standing behind the DJ booth, even though you're not playing. But it's more so, I'm going to get here so I can kind of have room to dance and show off my dancing skills, show off my flipping body, show off my outfit, regardless. So I'll just kind of show out in general. I love it. I think that energy is good. So, you know, but it was quite cringe still to see people trying to beg friends to go on the stage. It is what it is. Travis Box is playing and I'm just sitting there trying to absorb it and trying to have fun. And it's just not happening. It really isn't happening. And then I try to do the same thing that I always do. Like I said beforehand, I'm sitting, I'm back against the wall. I've got my coat between my legs, <coughs> drink in hand, ready to go, oh, closing my eyes, trying to get into the groove of it. I can't. Like, you know, this music's unbop unboppable. I think in my experience, unless you just like, you know, it's unboppable. There's no there's no skank that you can do to it. There's nothing, it's just it's just, you know, there's nothing to it. It's just da 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 da. Cool, whatever. Um then um what I try and do. Yeah, then I'm doing that, so I can't get into it. Then I close my I open my eyes, I look to the left to the right of me, and I see a guy going for it, like loving it, smiling. He's pointing to his friend when the tune comes on, like fuck that one that one then i look to my left um to like towards the stage because i'm standing here i'm here with my back to against the wall and on my right is the bar and here's the people in front of me and then to my left is the people on stage and then i'm seeing a girl coming underneath my arms as i'm kind of like you know trying to dance whatever she's oh excuse me and she's holding drinks in her hand and she's smiling so, oh, so excuse me swaying as she's trying to go into the stage like having a time after she's holding like four drinks in her hand and i'm like yeah it's definitely me it's definitely me these people are absolutely loving it. These kids are having the time of their lives and I can't get into it and I think this is shit. So it's definitely me. But the interesting part of it is I also think as unboppable and as uninteresting as the music is, it feels like this might be what we have to listen to for the next five, 10 years. This might be the evolution in techno that everyone was kind of waiting for. Everyone said, you know, what's going to be the new sound? What are people going to be playing? I think this might be it. I think these kids are going to be the new people you start seeing being played in, you know, not residents, but they're going to be people that you'd see in these big places, the, the Berghines and whatnot, in the main rooms. These are going to be the ones playing, because they're already there anyway, right? The girls from like Maladrunta and all those kind of things, it's not too far off from what this sort of sound is. Um, even though I like VTSS and stuff and SPF DJ, those girls, they sound similar to what, again, it's not the same, but that kind of like aggressive non there's, there's no charisma there's no joy there's no yoga bonito i mean there's no like love in it it's just kind of like in your face you know it's it's, it's basically anal music really isn't it? it's just not, i'm saying there's no love in anal but you know what i mean right it's not like romantic it's nothing like there's nothing like exhilarating and it doesn't lift you on a cloud. It just kind of just like hits you in the head like ba 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 which is fine right but I want something more, brother. And again, this is coming from somebody who has raved in a Burkhain for like a weekend solid and hasn't gone home. Why can you do that? Because they're able to take you on ebbs and flows. But maybe this is the whole point. Maybe this isn't about ebbs and flows. Maybe this is like the equivalent of like um, European Caucasian flipping version of Jungle. This might be it. This might be their version of Jungle where they basically have this music that just kind of only can exist. It's like gr grime sets. Grime sets can't really exist for more than an hour. When they go along than an hour, they kind of get a bit redundant. But if you have two crews battling each other, you know, bar for bar, sorry, um, on a radio for an hour, it leaves you wanting more. But usually it's the perfect amount. Maybe these DJs, the fact that they can only play for an hour to an hour, 20, two hours, maybe tops. And, you know, maybe that's enough. But I don't know, man. This event started at, ele no, what, it started at 11 p.m. or something. Luckily, I didn't go at 11. Luckily, I went at 1, 1 a.m. And by 4, I was already done. But it was 4 a.m. What's the point of leaving? Like, if you're going out and you left your house at 1 and you're, and you're there and it's now 4, there's no point of leaving at 4. You might as well just stay until the end now because, you know, you're here. Um, just kind of ride it out. And I did. Um, and yeah, man, I just wasn't really sold on it at all. I really wasn't sold on it. And I really want to be. And it's kind of making me think, should I even go to the festival? Now, in one part, I think I should, because like I said before, I always wanted to go to a possession in act in Paris, like in its actual um, home country, right? Where it's kind of birthed with people that are really kind of a part of that scene and see how it kind of resonates. Because maybe it's more of a European thing also, because... I don't know how many other parties in London play this type of music all day long. 
because that's the one thing we have that's the one kind of good selling point about clubbing in London even if you don't go to the trendy clubs for the most part I've always said I think that we have the best range when it comes to nights out like genre wise you could legitimately go to like an indie night a rock night a jazz night hip-hop whatever you want you could go to it and usually the interesting part about it also is that even if you went to like an Afrobeats night it wouldn't mean they're just going to play Afrobeats the whole night they will definitely mix into hip hop, some R and B, some pop, some this, whatever disco. They'd mix it in and that to keep it interesting. So it's like the what's that place called? Um, the Peckham flipping um garage place. That you know that that venue that that's known for having some really interesting nights, right? Throughout the week and throughout the weekend. But any night you go there, it's all, it's always completely different. Even in the night, the music played there. Even if it's just a disco soul train, doesn't mean it's just only going to be disco soul train. It might be some Motown. It might be this. It might be that. So I don't know if there's other parties that exist like possession that only play that kind of music all night long i don't know how what it would do but maybe that's the whole appeal maybe that's why people came out in their droves because it was rammed let me tell you that it was flipping packed 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 like they had two rooms obviously then they had the third room which is a chill out room which is i think was a perfect for that kind of rave because people were off their faces on pingers and whatnot so it was nice to have, maybe have a place where you can go maybe chill out and kind of recalibrate yourself and people were taking advantage of it and on any given moment it was rammed with people in there rammed in that chill out room um taking it all in or whatnot so credit to them where it needs to be but i don't know man i just i don't know I wasn't feeling it, man. I got to be honest. I really wasn't feeling it. And maybe this clip is illustrative of that. You know, I'm just sat there on the edges of the of the party, watching from afar like an old weird man. <laughs> While all the kids are having a great time, man. I don't know. It's made me think, should I but maybe I should go to the Paris one just so I can see it in actual in, in its actual locality. And obviously it'll give me a chance too to go to visit the kind of outskirts of Paris, which I've always wanted to go to, especially being a fan of um Spiral, that series called Engrenage. I would love to go and see what those kind of areas are like, the no-go zone areas, see what all these kind of, you know, North African dons kind of run those kind of um areas I like and whatnot out front, you know, with the tracks and what hopefully I don't get jacked, you know what I mean? All those kind of vibes. That would be quite cool to see. But God damn it, the music of these kind of things though, I don't know, man. It's a bit wild. Look at the hands. The video's playing now and there's plenty of hands like really going for it and loving it. Loving it, loving it, loving it. So maybe I'm in the minority. Well, I know I am. Well, well I know I'm in the minority. I know because, you know, it's just me talking. Yeah, man the kids loved it the kids loved it i didn't love it too much i guess it is what it is isn't it what can you do um met some cool people there though to be fair so big up everyone that i bumped into i think that was an absolute barnstorming night for terms of conversation and adding random people onto my instagram so that was nice to have a couple of friends i bumped into a couple of people actually from berlin who i'll probably end up visiting um or bumping into or maybe kind of hanging out with when i do end up going out there again later on this year so that might have been a net positive but yeah overall music i'm not a big fan of production level and how they put the event together bravo again flawless event no complaints there um great to see all the young kids out again you know looking cool um great outfits on and just kind of having a great time that was also incredible to see uh, but apart from that nothing more to add on that regard let's just leave it there on that one because i don't want to expose my age you know what i mean by by just going on rants about this sort of stuff but i don't know man it wasn't what I expected it to be. I have to be completely honest. 